for me it was like, how are these people ever going to rebuild? How are these people still so friendly? I mean, we we came across the Turkish people and they were they were friendly. They were they weren't rude. They weren't hostile towards you. They were accommodating. And when I just saw the destruction, I was just like, how can these people still be so friendly? How can these people still be, their spirits still be so high? So that for me was something that definitely stood out. I mean, we saw buildings that were just completely obliterated, families that have lost everything, including, including loved ones, but they were, still, they were still accommodating and happy to see us. Oh, they were just beautiful. They were absolutely amazing people. They... The general being is so warm and so welcoming and kind. It's you know, it's it was really phenomenal how they they made personal effort to connect with us, to get to know us, um, to feed us. I don't think I've ever eaten so much on a deployment, um, which you know is is rare. It's it's really rare and so humbling, and it reminds you to show gratitude and to be grateful for what you have and where you come from and to also just show kindness. It was, it was really, it was, yeah, it was great. It was phenomenal. The hospitality from the Turkish people was really amazing. Uh, so from the time when we landed on, on Friday and the epicenter when we started working, I mean, we just saw uh, the people just offering us uh, food all the time when you're on the ground. I mean, we are talking about people, there's no shops open, they themselves don't have any food, they don't know when the next uh, plate of food is coming from, and here they were just dishing out food to, to rescue us. So I think it's just a, a real testament to their character. The Turkish people are absolutely phenomenal, if, if I can say phenomenal. I mean, in, in, in uh, if, events that, that led to us being there. I mean, they, those people, you, you look at, you're looking at people that's got absolutely nothing left, but they still make sure that you've got a bottle of water, your dog's got, a bo got, got some water. Um, have you guys had something to eat? You know, they, they're so willing to take care of you first instead of you worrying about them. Very, very humble people, you know, so. But yeah, like I said, it, and, and I don't think I'll ever stop talking about the, the, the humility of, of, of of the people there. But the one thing that really does stand out is the gratitude. The gratitude of the Turkish people was just amazing. It kind of made you look back or be proud of what we as a country, South Africa, can be. And, and it makes you want to work towards that. Um, because we, we, we definitely still have it. But the people, um, no matter where we were, Antakya, no matter in which ends of Antakya you were, um, the ability to give, having lost everything, the ability to make sure and ensure that you are okay, knowing that they've got nothing, they've lost everything, but just so grateful, appreciative of your assistance. Um, and just in everything they did, you just felt that compassion, that love, that care, the, the driver who used to take us or take the rescue team around in the first few days. You remember he could only take the team uh, during the day and he said, look, I need to be back before evenings. And we'd ask him, um, but why do you need to be back in the evening? Sometimes the team needs to work, you know? And he was just, he didn't want to say his reason, but through our translators, his reason was what? That, you know, I'm actually lost everything. My house is destroyed. My children and who I left from my family sleeps in the truck at night. You know, everywhere we went, we just received, you know, support and thanks and gratitude for coming to assist and coming to help. Even on the collapse sites, you know, people would come and bring us food and bring us water. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just amazing. Like the, the Turkish people, having just gone through this, disaster, we're still able to, you know, welcome us and help us and support us. So I was, you know, I was very, very touched by that. It was incredible. The way that you could see, even with the devastation and everything that they had here, yeah, uh, 
the way that they were trying to assist us to get the job done, that they were making us feel welcome, even though they've just been through this crisis, you know, and we're still living in this. The friendliness, the, the way that they, in a way I can almost say that they tried to comfort us, uh, to make us comfortable and everything, uh, was, was really, I can't say difficult to comprehend, but just, um, it was good to see, you know, people just leaving their day jobs in different parts of the countries, of, of the country of Turkey, just to come and assist and help us there with this, uh, with this effort. Uh, the one youngster who sold his vehicle so he could buy tents and sleeping bags for us because he heard the South African team, it's cold and we needed more tents, we needed some stuff. And he actually sold his own vehicle, travelled, hired another vehicle, travelled for 18 hours to bring us food. So when we left, all the security personnel and the airport staff created a card of honour uh, for us. Uh, I think it was unexpected for, for everyone. We never expected them to do that. And uh, it, was, uh, quite, it was quite touching to see the, how they appreciated the rescue team that uh, came through to assist uh, the people of Turkey. So amazing the, the appreciation from these people have literally brought a lump to my throat. And every single Turkish person that we walked past in that, that whole airport, everybody would stop, clap hands and, you know, like, gesture thank you. It, it, it meant so much. I mean, because a little word thank you sometimes doesn't mean a thing. But just in that essence, it, they, they really appreciated what we came and did for them. And I said, to, to me, that will be pretty close to my heart for, for a very long time as well. The whole way we walked, from every corner, every restaurant, every shop, people were clapping and sharing, people were crying. They were just so grateful and so happy that, you know, we had come to help and do what we could do, you know. And it was like, it was very, very touching. Um, but at the same time, it was just, it was also quite sad because you, like, I mean, it still carry this feeling of like, I just wish we could have done more. This thing is a calling on, on me. Because a lot of people, they, they are thinking when I'm going out, I will come up with a lot of money. So I tell them, no, I'm just a volunteer for the gift. And also the volunteer of the South Africa because I'm not getting, getting paid by going out there. I'm just going there to help. The police security with us was telling me, they don't understand how Africa came so quick to come and assist them and where we located. We were there more quicker than their neighbours. Um, you know, not, it's not a competition, but um, it's just, you know, for them, they appreciated that. Imagine you came all the way from Africa to come and help us in South Africa. So it was really good to see that appreciation. When I got on the plane, I fell asleep. And then, like, just, you know, I just passed out, like there was no decision where I'm like, I'm going to have a nap. I just sat down in the chair and I passed out. And then I woke up and like, I just had this like flood of emotions, you know, because now I'm in a space where I no longer need to worry about anything. You know, it's, it's safe, like there's nothing to think about. And th then that's when everything kind of came through, you know, and like I cried, I cried for like three hours and it was, uh, it was really like intense because I think that was a point now, like I say, where I don't have this heightened level of situational awareness where I need to be in this red state of heightened awareness, constantly thinking my mind can now come back down. I don't need to worry, you know, I'm safe in this plane. The whole team's here, the equipment's taken care of, you know, no one's going to get crushed or killed. And then that's when uh, it all started to come through, you know, and then you start, I started to like remember all moments and, you know, like one feeling that just really came through was just like, I felt so sorry and sad for all these people and all these communities, you know. I think it was a very successful trip for us as canine handlers. Um, we did very well. 
and I think we did it very professional. Um, we've only had, since, since we got back, only had um, good things to just Thank you so much for uplifting the police and you know, thank you so much for what you guys did that side. You know, that, to me, like I said to you, to me it just means we did, we did it right. You know, we went there, did our, did our job and we did it successfully. When you sort of sit in and reflect back on, on the whole mission, um, I think the, the gratitude of the Turkish people, it's, it's a very humbling experience. It makes you, um, I think as, as you know, Mr. Ahmed said uh, on our debrief uh, that uh, evening in uh, Istanbul in a hotel, we got to go and reflect on, on what, what happened, what we, we've just been through. And if this doesn't change you, nothing will change you. Um, you're not the same person. Uh, I'm not the same person that came back. From, from what I've taken back is the amazing expertise, capabilities of our teams and individuals. You know, our dogs uh, were also amazing. Who I am and what I value changed immediately. The essence of what I appreciate about life and what I, what I want to transfer to my kids um, changed immensely. Um, but more so, more than anything, I think refocusing on doing good and being a good person is reflected regardless of what you are exposed to. And I think that's what the Turkish people shared with us. For me, uh, one of the things that got me going is uh, appreciating what you have. Uh, I think going there, seeing people not having no food, no water, no shelter. Uh, I, I mean, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I mean, the basic physiological needs are right at the bottom, and those people didn't have that at all. And uh, we knew that we would come home uh, to a comfortable lives. Uh, so for me, really, it's just appreciating the small things that you, that you, that you have. It was really just life-changing. It was, yeah, it was life-changing. It was humbling, actually. I think that would be the word that would describe it best. It was absolutely humbling. It took us all down to rock bottom. It was, for me, probably the, the hardest urban search and rescue that I've ever done but in so many ways also the most rewarding.